Sprint sessions were introduced to Formula One in 2021. The qualifying stage was shifted to Friday, and an extra 100-kilometer race was slotted into Saturday's schedule to get the grid for Sunday's Grand Prix. The new format was so successful that the temporary excitement has now become a permanent fixture. However, sprints are for selected racetracks only. Join us as we explore the addition of the new six sprint events and what they could mean for Formula One. Starting with, sprints are here to stay. After a prolonged wait, on September 27th, the World Motorsport Council approved the move to feature six sprint races for the calendar year 2023 and onwards. The venues for these events will be confirmed in due time. The first three sprint races took place in 2021 at Silverstone, Monza, and Interlagos. For the 2022 two season, Imola, the Red Bull Ring, and Interlagos were chosen. Formula One president and CEO Stefano Domenicali stated in an interview, I'm glad that we can announce six sprints will be part of the championship from 2023 onwards, building on the success of the new format introduced for the first time in 2021. The sprint offers action over three days, with drivers competing for several prizes starting on Friday and continuing through the main event on Sunday. According to the enthusiastic comments from fans, teams, promoters, and partners, the concept is giving Formula One a previously unseen dimension. There will be six race weekends with the sprint format, beginning with the 2023 FIA Formula One World Championship season. Sprint sessions have gained popularity over the previous two seasons and provide an interesting aspect to the race weekend structure. Moving on, what is the actual format and how would they work? F1 Sprint will, in general, be a race over over 100 kilometers that lasts for about 25 to 30 minutes. It is intended to be brief and fast paced, with cars racing non-stop. Simply said, it's a full-scale battle before the actual race. Interesting, huh? The top three finishers will receive points, three for the winner, two for the first runner-up, and one for whoever finishes third. Naturally, there won't be a podium presentation, because the top three finishers in Sunday's Grand Prix will continue to receive that accolade. However, there will be a special post-sprint event for the top three. The grid for Sunday's marquee event, the Grand Prix, where the usual format will not change, will be determined by the sprint's finishing order. Sprint qualifying will have a more subdued grid process, with journalists and visitors being allowed on the grid, as with the chase during non-COVID times for the Grand Prix. But special events like the National Anthem will only occur during Sunday's major race. Following up, how would they qualify? Of course, the one-hour qualifying session that is divided into three parts will continue to be a significant portion of the program. In recent years, qualifying has produced a lot of drama, which the owners of Formula One simply adore. There is no chance that stage will ever be eliminated. To give the opening day of track action some seriousness and a swelling event, qualifying will be moved to Friday. Friday's activities were formally restricted to practice. To make it simpler for those who are working to watch, the session will also be taking place later in the day. The sprint winner from the previous year received the distinction of starting on the pole. The winner of this year's qualifying round will, however, receive the pole position for the sprint race. The sprint winner will then line up in position one for the Grand Prix on Sunday. This session's tire regulations will also change, with only soft tires being allowed everywhere. Teams and drivers won't be required to use the tire they qualified on in Q2 for Sunday's race. Instead, they can start on any compound. Moreover, a few changes have been made to practice sessions. There will only be two practice sessions throughout the course of the weekend, as opposed to the previous three. For the first match on Friday at noon, teams will be able to use any two sets of tires of their weekend allocation of 12, which has been cut by one set because there would be less racing over the three days. This is distinct from the sets they have to reserve for qualifying, which consists of five sets of soft tires and the race, which consists consists of two sets of tires of their choosing. It is anticipated that the teams will initially set up with the harsher compound and then possibly switch to a softer compound when they begin to evaluate performance. After FP1, the vehicles will enter Parc Ferme, which literally means closed park in French, before being set loose for FP2, which will take place on Saturday.
Saturday morning. They will be allowed to utilize one pair of tires of their choice in this location. After leaving the confiscated area for the F1 sprint, they will return to Parc Ferme before spending the night there again in preparation for the race on Sunday. Next up, how does Parc Ferme work with the addition of sprint? The new rules restrict the amount of time that would have been spent preparing the car for the following day, and disallow replacing significant components in Parc Ferme to prevent teams from creating unique, qualifying cars. However, in order to make Saturday's FP2 session more beneficial, certain freedom on car reconfiguration is given. Teams may swap out the brake friction material used in qualifying, and the F1 sprint before the Grand Prix with a new identical set for safety reasons. They can also modify the brake ducts. If a front wing breaks in the F1 sprint, for instance, and the team is out of the front wings of the newest standard, they're free to utilize the front wings of an older specification. Previously, a penalty would have been given for a change in the specification for either a new or an existing component. Teams are allowed to modify suspension components as described in Article 10.3 of the technical regulations, including camber, toe, and ride height, between qualifying and F1 sprint. This includes changing or adjusting suspension parts, such as springs and dampers. In other news, first up, sprints aren't going to be the only new thing in F1 next year. More exciting things are coming our way. For the first time ever, Formula One will hold 24 races in a season in 2023, setting a new record for the sport. The program for the upcoming season now has two main events, including the return of the Chinese GP after a three-year absence and the inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix, which is held on a Saturday night. Yep, you heard that right. Racers will be zooming their cars across the Vegas Strip. After debuting in 2021, Qatar is also back, and despite contract uncertainty, Monaco is still scheduled to take place in the middle of the first of two triple headers. The French French Grand Prix will no longer be held in 2023, and a highly anticipated race in South Africa has also been left out. Pre-season testing is scheduled to begin on March 5th in Bahrain, and the season will end on November 26th in Abu Dhabi. Next up, get ready for three all-new Porsche vs. Ferrari blockbusters. Forget Ford vs. Ferrari. A new version of Porsche vs. Ferrari is soon to be released, but it won't take place on a movie screen. Rather, it will take place on various race tracks across the world. For the first time in 53 years, Porsche and Ferrari will compete for the overall victory at Le Mans 24 hours in 2023 in brand new prototypes. Porsche has enlisted Team Penske, America's preeminent racing outfit, to operate its 963 LMDH, which seeks to recapture the golden years of the 917 that McQueen so admired. An all-Italian lineup will include Ferrari, whose factory team Team AF course will participate with a hypercar. Which team should win? The Germans with their American partners and the cost-effective LMP2-based chassis, or the Scuderia with its Italian flair and its insistence on keeping the hypercar due to its greater engineering latitude? As for total means, Porsche leads with 19 overall Le Mans 24 hours victories, while Ferrari is in second place with nine triumphs. Lastly, for Daniel Ricciardo, taking a reserve position in Formula One in 2023 is now a realistic prospect. After McLaren stated in August that Ricciardo's contract will be terminated early at the end of the current season, the Australian has been connected to open seats at Alpine, Williams, and Haas, as well as backup positions for Red Bull and Mercedes. Speaking ahead of this weekend's Singapore GP, Ricciardo revealed he is hesitant to take a drive with a team towards the back of the field. He has had three weeks since the Italian GP to reflect on his future. When asked directly whether picking a reserve position over a drive was likely, he added, it's certainly something that's realistic. The 33-year-old's two seasons with McLaren reached their height with his win at the Italian GP last year, but overall, he has been significantly outpaced by teammate Lando Norris, and the team has only sometimes been successful in challenging for podium positions. Oscar Piastri will be McLaren's new driver for 2023. What are your thoughts on sprints? Which team will be at more advantage? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.